Hey there, Cardomancers. April here with Tarot and Witchery. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Cosmic Visions Tarot. You know what? I did an initial flip through of this and I, I have it recorded, but I thought I'm kind of tired of those videos. What I want is somebody to work with the deck and talk to me about it. So that's what I did. I worked with this for a month and I want to tell you what I discovered about it. Before I do that, though, I want to let you know that I have free PDF printables down below that you may be interested in. As I go to get into this, I'm going to tell you it's a good sturdy box. How many of you care about that? It actually opens really nicely. It doesn't have holes, but it, it comes right out. Okay, and it's got this, the, the box is beautiful. And it's got a great book, you guys. The What I found using this is that I, I really didn't even need the book, but she comes at this, Jessica Shackleton comes at these cards at a very, from kind of a different angle. And so if you're wanting to sort of expand your knowledge on the tarot, I really appreciated just the little blurbs there. It's not a lot. It's just a, it's just a little bit. So good little book here. So I will say one of the things that I don't like about this deck is that it's rose petal finish. It's really hard to shuffle. They just stick together, but I love the backs and it's really lovely. I found that working with this deck was so profound for me. I did multiple readings with it and I feel like the black and white motif really allows her to put color where it counts to draw the eye. So right here, three of swords, one of my favorite cards. If you haven't seen my video on that, you can check that out. It's in the description box down below. Man, one of my favorite cards. Look at this. Look how she's communicating with you because each tarot reader is communicating with you. They are showing you their experience, their knowledge of the tarot. And so paying attention to not just what you know, but how the cards themselves, how the creator of the deck is communicating with you is so vital, I feel like. And this is even more important for those of you who don't know the tarot. So look at this. Look, the high priestess, just beautiful. She's got the moon cycle around her. Her third eye is open. She doesn't look flimsy or feeble like some of the high priestess, like in the Rider Waite. She just looks so um, like out of it, like she's just a child in there. Um, and here, this, this looks like a woman. To me, she looks like she knows herself and she's really, she's really self-possessed. This Eight of Pentacles, I had this Eight of Pentacles come up and I was like, how is this the Eight of Pentacles? Which again is good because I'm, I'm immediately thinking about a traditional Eight of Pentacles and I'm thinking about how it should uh, intimate you know, a craftsman's knowledge. And I want to read to you what's here in the book because I thought it was really great. It has sunflowers in it and it has the bee. Now, what do you think of when you think of the bee? To me, I think of, first of all, this is the, the best shape that is the best usage of space that they have found. To me, it's, it's, it's really intimating the perfection in not only in this shape, but also in the workmanship of the universe. Reading this here, the Eight of Pentacles encourages you to use your higher self to aid you in becoming a master of your craft. Delve deeply into a task at hand and strive to be the best you can be. You are the hard worker and should know that through your dedication and willingness to learn, you will hone in on developing your skills to become quite the craftsman of your chosen task. Don't be afraid to ask a like-minded individual for guidance and show appreciation for what they can offer. So you've got the bees working together, right? Much like the bee, you have a strong work ethic, but you should also know how important it is to stop and smell the flowers every now and then. You are reminded to find the delicate balance between the two. So it's really interesting. You can see how she talks about the essence of this card, but takes it to a practical level of how do you implement that in your life and how do you keep this energy healthy? Because the eights oftentimes are about energies that kind of are overtaking us. They've we've really picked up some momentum by the time we get to the eights. Look at this hermit. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. I, I really just think so many of these are, are just fabulous. So 
Six of Cups. Look, you've got the child inside of the adult. Uh, perfect. And then it's also like, look at these roots. So you've got the roots that kind of intimate the ancestral self. You know, as I worked with this, I found I really didn't need the guidebook. It was such a joy to explore the cards. Here's a favorite card for me. You've got this river below. It's the flow of life. It's the direction you're going, but it's like choosing to go in that flow. This is Six of Swords, which is about crossing over. And a lot of times when we get the Six of Swords, we're at this place where we're ready to move on. And we need to make that conscious choice to do that. And so to me, this really reflects that. It reflects butterflies, which is new beginnings, like emerging in a new beginning. But it's this, this boat that is being sailed in the direction of the flow. Not You're not carried away by it. I feel as though your transformation is lifting you above the obstacles, above anything, and you are following the flow to a new horizon. I mean, the cards here are just wonderful. And again, just small pops of color that are going on. Honestly, this Wheel of Fortune really falls short for me, but here's the other thing for me that I do not like about this deck. The mother or queen and the kings are all really young people and it's not that young people can't embody those energies because they certainly can but I, I feel like part of what you're looking at is someone who has developed themselves and therefore they are embodying it and it's in the representation of that for me is someone that's older. I prefer someone that is older. So here we have one of those kings right here. This to me looks like this group of guys that used to travel around when I was on tour with the Grateful Dead and they were kind of these, um, they all had dreads and they were all super pretty boys. You can see the super pretty boy right there. And they all look like that, okay? They were all like, you know, 24, 25, and they had their hair, and they were just so good looking, and they totally knew it, and <laughs> and they were so full of themselves. They really were, and they were just this group of guys that traveled around together. So for me, that's my own personal experience that's kind of coming in and sort of souring it, but I did really have to face that when I was going through the deck, and I would get that, that... I just kept looking at this and it was hard for me to not disregard the card. And so again, that can be a good thing because it helps you to grow and face your shadow self and choose to have a different opinion, choose to move into a new way of thinking about something and to get healed. And so I just had to do some work. Uh, so two really great cards here that just came up in a row. Here we have the divine. So they have, there's an extra card in here and it is 22, the divine. And I love this. It's got, it's like a cross and you see the energy coming in and going out and this within the sacred circle. And there's a multidimensional, uh, multidimensionality to this, which really appeals to me. This goes beyond the world and to me, and it goes into this place that offers offers me the chance to transcend the traditional tarot and have a different experience with the tarot. It's this extra card that lets me think, what is beyond all that? What is beyond the body of knowledge that I already have with the tarot? And I know some of you are anti-extra card. I get it because you're like, it's 78 cards. That's it. But for me, the beauty of this card it is amazing. And it really just allows me to expand my mind into exploring what does it mean to go beyond and to me this is that multi-dimensionality it's it's really that arriving at a higher level of embodiment here that transcends anything that I've studied before and I really liked that about this extra card and then there's this wonderful four of pentacles right here which I found looks it's like she's mesmerized and I do feel like this there is something about the fours um, especially in the female aspects of it or the divine feminine. So the pentacles and the cups where there's sort of a drunkenness to it. There's a, it, it's almost unhealthy. It really can be unhealthy and it can dip towards that. So just that how she's mesmerized there. 
Look at this Daughter of Cups, which is the Princess of Cups or Page of Cups. It's got the fish floating in space, her hair, the cup itself, just that water element, really well done. And the, the serene look on her face is just beautiful. The devil, so this is a good devil. I liked it. It had the heart in the cage below and didn't have a ton of color here. Had a lot of red, which is a lot of that um, base chakra energy. So I really appreciated this. I like this two of pentacles, the balance and sort of the light coming down from above, illuminating what brings balance. Really good. Ten of swords. I, I like how she's not really dead and she's, she's in this sort of fetal position because I feel like this is about rebirth. I do like this mother of wands. I love her Afro. Like to me, that's some real power wearing your afro which is something that really came out of the 70s as a movement when black women were turning away from stereotypical images of hair that did not embody their natural self and they chose to wear their fros so some of these are just so interesting look at this hangman he's in a spacesuit, and i dig that because this really does have that cosmic feel if you've ever seen some of my other videos, then you know that I believe that this is our spacesuit that we're here wearing. And it's just designed for who we are. So to see that in The Hanged Man, where we really go within ourselves into our spacesuit and we go into the cosmic place in order to grow and become more of who we are. The two-faced wolf, or is it a coyote? I don't know. Maybe it's a fox, because maybe that's a foxtail right there. Um, I don't think that Seven of Swords is always deception, but I do think it can point to us deceiving ourselves even. Um, but I think that's more of the shadow aspect. Faceless being looking out at you, held within the crescent, so that kind of intimates there could be some illusion, some clouds fogging things up. You have six cups, I mean, you have six cups that are held by one hand, and then you have one cup that's held by two. And a lot of times when the Seven of Cups comes up, it is about choice, us looking for something, and uh, but only one of those things is right. So I kind of like the fact that it has two hands on it. So there's just, there's so many beautiful things about this deck that I have really enjoyed. And I, I, I there's something about this deck that I just completely get. Look at this Ace of Cups. I like how it's like this teacup. And look, there's the dove on there. So it's got the dove. So it's a little bit of that sort of grail energy and it's pouring forward. The other thing that I really like about this deck is that it has these circles within circles, the wheel within a wheel. Here's the card that I started off my whole journey with this deck with, which is the Hierophant, just gorgeous. The monad up here, the shaman here, and the monad is actually part of his headdress. And he is opening his mouth and filling the student with the wisdom of the universe that's coming down from that higher all. But also at the same time, the student is being filled directly. So I love that this is a cycle and takes away a lot of the negative energy or the negative connotation of the Hierophant. It really do. The moon, not the greatest, you guys. Honestly, I guess there's a person with the wild mask on. So what's going on underneath there with the moon? Um, I don't like every card in this deck but I can read with it so easily. It speaks to me so directly. And there are just some incredible, look at this judgment. Like here's the ships have come, they're beaming down. Look at this beautiful, like there's this reflection of herself. I mean, you can read this one in reverse is kind of interesting. Like the shadow self, the moon self reaching. So there's some neat things like that in here. Actually, this Son of Cups, I think, is really precious. This Knight of Cups. To me, this really shows you the softness and the gentleness 
of the Knight of Cups and his romantic self. Beautiful world card, flower of life, um, all these different eyes and crescents coming on. And of course, the serpent in there. So much going on in these cards. What a beautiful wild ride this deck is. I really recommend it. There's a link down below if you want to purchase it. I have so enjoyed this deck and I know that it is going to be a staple for me at least for some time because you know me I just kind of get over things <laughs> until we meet again why don't you check out these videos over here if you made it this far give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below on what you think about this deck